Hello and welcome to Dystopian Electronics Workshop. Today, we're gonna go out and take a look at a dump pile that's here on my property. Uh, people who own this property before me didn't take very good care of it. Instead of having trash service, they just dumped all of their trash out in the woods. So we're gonna go see if there's anything that we can find that will help us to build our workshop. Right here in the pile, we've got a couple things we can pull out. That looks like an old CRT TV. There's, is that a scanner or a printer? This guy here, the Singer Magic Press, old t-shirt making press. We'll get these loaded up on the car. All right, looks like an old TV VCR combo. Let's see what else we can find. Ooh, it's an old telephone. Be careful, that thing is covered in fire ants. One more AC plug sticking out of the ground here. See if that connects anything. Nope. But if it works, that's a uh, 3.7 volt DC converter. So we'll go add these to the pile. A couple more things here. Got an old computer. All this has been sitting up here for so long. See, this is designed for Microsoft Windows 98. And, uh, I noticed that I was walking here, some old Christmas lights. Nothing else that'll get us some wire to wire up the project. All right, so we found some good stuff out there. First, uh, let's take a look. I got this little power supply for the Nokia phone. There's a 120 volt AC input and 3.7 volt DC output, 340 milliamps. So we'll clean this up a little bit. The connector is pretty dirty. So we'll clean that up, see if we can test it out, see if it's actually functional, and hopefully add that to the workshop, get us a power supply. So I got a brush right over here. Brush some of the dust off, get the dirt out. Now you may be wondering, is that brush something that I have scavenged? No, it is not. But as we go along, hopefully we'll be able to replace a lot of those things and not require anything to scavenge for the workshop. You know, those contacts actually don't work too bad. So we got that clean. Got a plug right over here. Go ahead and plug this in, see if it goes pop. Assume this is center positive. Just gonna hook that on the outside. Put on the inside. Not a whole lot. Maybe that center pin is really small. Let's see if I can find something to shove in there. Ah, here you go. Little electronics probe. That fits in really well, and that was hook right on. I'm just gonna shove that little electronics probe in there. Put it onto my positive voltage. Okay. We're seeing 8.9 volts unloaded. Well, it looks like that power supply does work. We're gonna set this aside. I will add that to the log. Also, if you look at that, that is not a standard barrel connector. That's a small one. Let's take a look at this other power supply. 
This is a Sony AC adapter. It says, what does that say? Output DC nine volts for use with Sony telephone. So we'll go ahead and brush this up, see if we can get this clean enough to use. I have a little bit of a plan of what we might do with these for a early project. Might try to do a little electrolysis and see if we can clean up some of that rusty tool. I'll plug this in. Grab our handy dandy multimeter. This barrel wouldn't wouldn't mind having a little something in there too. Get this test connected. There you go. 9.84 volts. So it looks like we got a nine volt power supply and three volt power supply. That's a pretty good start. So next up, we got this square driver. Let's see, yeah, it's super rusty. Just gonna hit this with a wire brush. Knock some of that rust off. This is good. This is the first tool that we have as part of our workshop. Some good metal under there still. And it did come look at that, with that one socket. Let's see if you can see what it says there. Maybe not. I'll try to clean it up a little bit. Now I'm going to put this on the end so I don't hurt myself. Hold that so it's visible. There you go. 18 millimeter. So we got ourselves a driver and 18 millimeter socket to go with it. That'll come in handy. Next up, we got the Sony telephone. This goes along with that one power supply. It is filthy. Let me grab a trash can here. Brush this off into the can. And just for fun, let's plug it in and see if it powers up. Here's that power supply. Plug it in. Nope. <laughs> no power. Not surprised. That's good. That means. We can crack it open and see what electronics we can get out of it. There you go. So let's take this apart. Keep my arm out of the shot there. Let's see, sometimes they hide one underneath here. Ooh, got a whole bunch of leaves underneath there. This thing was full of ants before. I'm pretty sure I let it sit out long enough. Got rid of all those ants. Okay, and look there. Indeed, is one more hidden screw. It's just full of dirt. Well, this guy should just pop open now. Let's see. Sometimes a little gentle prying is needed. Ooh. <laughs> it's not surprising. This did not work when we plugged it in. It is pretty corroded. Being said, we may be able to find something usable in here. All right. Let's take a look at this. Interesting things. Here's a wire that was added in to fix a mistake on the PCB. It was a crystal. That may actually be useful. 
Eight megahertz crystal. Not a whole lot else in here that looks in very good condition. Let me go ahead and unscrew this board and see what we have underneath, but this may be close to a total loss. It shouldn't be surprising. Some of these screws are a little rusty. They're hard to take out. This is a circuit board we're not going to save anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and use some cutters to get through the PCB here. I will release the PCB here and we'll just leave that screw in the corner. Here's what we got here. There's a couple of wires hooked up to the charging base. Cut those off. Up here, this is screwed in too, so we're going to have to unscrew that. Those screws look like they're in a little better condition. held in place by this wire that's going to the antenna. I'm going to go ahead and cut that wire. I don't know if you can see that there. It looks like it may be a little coaxial cable. That may be worth saving. That gets us free. Some wire running up to that speaker. I think that speaker is going to be a total loss. We'll pull it out anyway and see what we can find. Yep, that is gone. That's toast. However, there's some wire hooked up to it. That might be useful. Good news is, there's no fire ants in here anymore. The screws are a little finer pitch. Let me grab a different driver. He's got one screw left here. He has decided it does not want to come out. We'll go for a different option on this. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and drill this screw out. <laughs> You're not here to smell that. <laughs> you should be very glad because it stinks. That is awful. I got one final screw in here I missed. Silicon pad in there, our numbers. Other than that, it's just a shell. So let's take a look here. A couple LEDs that are totally rusted through. Up here at the top, we got a little display. It's actually looking better than the everything else has and there's three leds that look like they might be salvable coming over here to the second board got some diodes up here 
Should be able to pull some of those. We got a power socket. Barrel. Barrel socket. A little transistor here, maybe. Got some inductors. Looking good. And a bunch of capacitors. Maybe even a fuse, 250 milliamp fuse. Oh, and a transformer, even if the outside of that is rusty. We'll check it and see how the inside of it is. Let's uh, pull out the soldering iron and pull some components. Okay, to get this loose, I'm going to add just a little bit of fresh solder. If that helps me out, loosening this up. What's there already is pretty corroded. Whoop. Melted that guy. Okay, so whatever solder is in here is so corroded. I'm just making no progress with it at all. So instead of using the soldering iron, we're going to try some mechanical removal. Got these pliers here. Yep. Just went ahead and pulled that LED right off. I was grabbing whatever solder was on there, and squeezing, and it's falling right off. So before we go to any more effort, let's test that. All right, to do the test, I got this little multi-function tester, TC1. This will test LEDs, resistors, all kinds of stuff, let you know exactly, not just what it is, but what the specs are for it. The nice part about these testers is it doesn't matter which leg you hook up to. So we're hooked up now, I'm gonna hit test. Nope. There you go, diode. Tells you which leg is the anode, which one is the cathode. There you go, that's our first LED. I'm encouraged. Let's rip another one off of here. love to have longer leads but we get what we get mm -hmm. there we go. that cleaned up nicely test this guy too it's always good when you're recovering electronics to test them out and make sure they work There you go, and I hooked that one up the other direction, so you can see it really works bi-directionally. Alright, we got a red LED and a green LED. Here's the question. Can we get this display, and if we do, will it work? All right, I'm going to go ahead and just cut these two wires off. This little black wire, a little red wire. It's something. I'm just going to go in here with these nippers. Yep, the rest of it popped out. Let's see if we can do that on the other side. of a couple of them. I think I actually got all the legs free. See? Get this up here. That is potted. So the odds are, unless we got some infiltration through the front, this is going to work. Let me show you something else that I like using. Alright. 
I find that Goof Off does a really good job of cleaning electronics like this. I'm just going to grab a little bit of paper towel. Squirt a little on there. And here you go. Here's what it looks like before cleaning. Here it is after cleaning. So let's see. Let go ahead and clean this. Ah, beautiful. There you go. ELD four zero six one DB slash S one three four. All right. Well, I haven't looked up yet. Yeah. Data sheet on this, but I'm just going to go ahead and pick two random legs and see if we can light something up. Yes, indeed. And just for fun, I'll go to a different leg. All right. So this little display works. So we've got a two digit display. That'll be useful. For this section of the board, we're completely done. Let's see, there's nothing left on here except this wire. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clip all that off. Yes, we're missing out on a little bit of wire. Not removing it from the circuit board, but in this case, I think it's worthwhile. I'm going to call it on that. Let's see about getting some of these capacitors. Looks like I may have messed this one up. So the legs on this are a little longer. I'm going to plug this directly in. And let's test it. Hundred and six point three. Labeled a hundred microfarads. Sixteen volt. Right, we got ourselves a capacitor. See if we can do that again a few more times. How clean that comes out. I am not used at all to, uh, pulling components like this, but it's actually a lot easier than desoldering, that's for sure. A little resistor. Big downside of this, all these components have tiny little legs. But at least we're getting something out of this. I didn't think we were going to get anything, to be honest. Yeah, let's grab some of these inductors. This is interesting. I'm going to pull this wire. These two inductors are actually just soldered together. Resistor. There you go. Here's a transistor labeled Q2. So we may actually get another transistor out of this as well. Oop. 
Nope. Legs broke off on that one. This section of the board is not in as good a shape as the other one was. Resistor. There's another resistor. Capacitor. Four diodes here. I'm guessing they're using them as a rectifier. So they're individual diodes. Another inductor. Let's see if we can get this transformer off. Now this I'm gonna keep even though the wires are just ripping right out of it. This should give us a good little source of magnet wire. In fact, I'm just going to nip that. So we've got a tiny bit more left on here that's still good. We've got this guy, that's labeled U3. That's not a transistor. Likely not. There you go, that came out pretty clean. 78M05A. I'll have to look that guy up. All right, a couple more inductors. Got one more capacitor here. That guy broke. Two Zener diodes. I think these would break, but oh, yep, that one shattered. Right, let's get this power socket off of here. Deal with that later. Give this last Zener dialed one more shot. Okay, got one end. There you go. Clean Zener. Finish breaking this off. All right, got a clean power socket. Well, I think that's pretty good for right now. I'll let you know if I find anything else in here, but looks like everything else is pretty much shot. I went ahead and opened up that board. There's not a whole lot in here. Looks like there's one little crystal oscillator, maybe a couple of capacitors. So those look pretty shot. So we may be able to get a little something out of there. Here's the second board. There's probably the most interesting part. All of these traces look like they're made out of gold. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in a box and we'll start collecting pieces that have gold in them. And hopefully at some point we can try removing that gold and actually getting gold from all these electronics that we're collecting. What I want to do for you really quickly is recap what we collected and looked at in this video. So we got the quarter inch driver with the 18 millimeter socket. 
Uh, there are four resistors. Looks like we got two 10 ohm and two 10 mega ohm. We got eight capacitors of various sizes, seven inductors. Oh, we got the four diodes, one zener diode, one electrical fuse, two LEDs, one red, one green. We got this one mystery component here, and I will zoom in and take a look and see what the writing is on that. It's A800. It's got a symbol that looks like two P's back to back. And here we have one linear voltage regulator. We got a phone jack that's pretty dirty. I'm not sure if we're going to use that, but we'll hold on to it in the meanwhile. We have a barrel jack. And we have a two digit LED display, as well as the two LED wall warts or uh, DC power supplies. Uh, we did end up with 18 screws, the two circuit boards, some wire and this transformer that we're going to use to harvest some magnet wire. So that's what we are going to add to the workshop today. Now that we've removed all the parts from the amp phone, let's take a quick look at what we could do with the components that we got. First component that we're going to deal with is this five volt voltage regulator. I have attached the data sheet for this linear voltage regulator on the show notes for the video. Our power coming out of this is going to be input, ground, and output. So I'm going to flip this chip around backwards before I start that. Let's talk a little bit about a prototyping board. The way a prototyping board works is each little group of holes is tied together. And along the top and bottom here, you've got a positive rail and a negative rail, which these vertical groups of holes is connected together so it makes it really easy to quickly throw together a prototype. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw this linear regulator in. I'm going to go ahead and stick it backwards so that our output is towards all the rest of the things we're using. Now on the manual it does say that you're supposed to have a capacitor. So I got a capacitor here between the input and the ground. I'll pop that in and then here we have our barrel jack and I went ahead and soldered some of that wire from the connector on so our tip is our positive so we're gonna hook the positive and the negative and right here I'm actually gonna stick that negative up top for a reason you'll see later so now we got our power coming in, our negative, we're going to pull out of that middle. I'm going to run it down to this negative bus on the bottom. So now we got negative hooked up, and from the positive output, I'm going to hook in a red wire and run that down to the positive. Now this is stranded wire, it's best to use solid core wire, but this is what we got, so this is what we're using. Red wire versus black wire, there actually doesn't matter at all. The electricity can't tell the difference between the two colors, but for us it makes it easy to keep track of what's running where. So when possible, I try to use correctly color-coded wire. Also, once you put a small capacitor, so here we got a small capacitor, between the positive and negative on the output. So once again, I'm gonna line up the uh, negative part of the capacitor and I'm just gonna throw that in line there. It does work without them, but since we have the capacitors, we might as well use them. So next up, we'll grab this seven segment display. It's got two seven segment displays. We're just gonna pop it in here. This bridge here is two separate sections. So if I pop it in, arcing, over that bridge, then all the wires are hooked up to different sections. This is a common anode display, so all of the power comes in on pins four and five. I went ahead and took one of our resistors here and soldered it to a jumper wire so it had a long enough lead. And I'm going to go ahead and pop that into our positive. I'm going to pop that into number one, two, three, four. I've just got a short red jumper here. Take that from the four. And jumper it.
to five. With all of that hooked up, we just need one more wire to see something turn on, which will be exciting. So I'm gonna go now from our negative bus to our first segment. Anywhere along this negative bus, I'm gonna go out so you can see what I'm doing better. Actually, I'm gonna do the same thing with this positive wire. I'm gonna run this way out here just so it's out of the way. I can squish our jumper down. So I'm gonna hook up this barrel jack. And we'll see, all right, we got one segment turned on. So now I'm gonna hook up a bunch more wires and we'll see what we can do. All right, let's see if this thing will turn on. Hey, there you go. Now, the only reason this says on is because I wired it up that way so the correct segments of the display would be on, but at least you see we could use this for a indicator. We could have it output whatever we wanted, but there is a quick example of how we can use the display and the components that we pulled out of the amp phone. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Check in next week to see what we have. And in the meanwhile, you get out there and do something.